degrowth is an idea that criticizes any system that pursues economic growth first and foremost. These systems rely on exploitation and environmental degradation at the expense of pluralism, care, and well-being. We're talking about capitalism. Degrowth is also a movement where critical ideas converge with political action. We see it as a movement among diverse and overlapping movements that share in common a dissatisfaction with the status quo and a desire for a just and democratic social transformation. Degrowth is also practice. Sharing, subsistence, and solidarity economies reduce resource use while encouraging relationship, reciprocity, and equity. And degrowth is also a body of scholarship. It has many branches, alliances, and adversaries. <laughs> Those opponents of degrowth spread misunderstandings on purpose. So let's talk about what degrowth isn't. All evidence suggests that growth can't be great. More GDP means more resource extraction and more carbon emissions. Instead of trying to make growth sustainable, degrowth pursues sustainability directly. Forget growth. We're not creating a new measurement to increase infinitely. Instead of replacing GDP with just another number to grow, degrowth is about improving life in ways that can't be captured by numbers getting bigger. Recession is when an economy that depends on growth We're talking about capitalism. doesn't grow. Degrowth means reorganizing society to meet everybody's needs without growing the economy. If growth is not the goal, then there's no downside to giving generously for flourishing together. Degrowth replaces privately hoarded riches with shared public wealth. We're not just preparing for when civilization crumbles. Degrowth is necessary to prevent catastrophe. Plenty of societies have grown delicious food, but not their economies. Medicine and the internet can exist without growth too. Maybe these things can serve us better in an economy not centered on expansion and profit. It's not about shrinking everything. It's about shrinking the economy as a whole. Maybe we need more solar water heaters while we shrink the oil industry and weapons manufacturing until they cease to exist. Degrowth is not just less, but different. It's not just a policy package, nor is it only about reducing our footprints or anti-capitalism. Degrowth is about collectively reimagining what it means to live well now and into the future. It's about exploring and giving legitimacy to the radically different ways of organizing our economy and our society. It's about prioritizing relationships that recognize our interconnectedness and encourage solidarity, conviviality, and care for one another and the planet we reside on. When we come together to enact and envision the futures we desire, we're also creating spaces that promote democratic and participatory processes and allow for disagreement in a deliberative forum. Respecting plurality doesn't come without conflict. Conflict is inherent to any relationship. As a society, we need to explore different ways of negotiating difference and practicing empathy. We're not imagining conflict-free utopias. We're dreaming a better world where we can all coexist. And in coming together, degrowth as a movement, actions, and body of scholarship has had a lot of spirited engagement. We need to listen deeply to the many other movements working against exploitative systems and imagining alternative futures in many different ways and with many different lenses. We said degrowth critiques any system that pursues economic growth first and foremost. And we are talking about capitalism, but it's not just capitalism. Capitalism depends on systems of superiority and domination, like colonialism, extractivism, and productivism. And tackling growth means addressing all of these. We need to recognize historical and current injustices and ensure that degrowth does not reproduce the same logics that got us here. As degrowth scholars and activists, we need to center not just justice, but restorative justice. 
with degrowth as a movement among movements, how can we best support each other? Fishers catch family dinner from the lake. Activists rescue edible but not sellable food from local farms and bakeries to feed their communities for free in public places. Tenants collectively refuse to pay rent. City councilors shift money from police to teachers. Environmental defenders put their bodies in the paths of the construction of new highways and pipelines, blocking the ever-extending tentacles of the growth economy. <laughs> 